Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nella Lazarevic. I'm a journalist from Montenegro, living in Italy. Uh, we are here for the panel Media Sabotage in the Balkans. In, uh, I assume that some of you are in Italian. There's a very powerful term for this in Italian and it's uh, for this kind of strategies and it's uh, la macchina del fango. Uh, for those who are not Italian, meaning uh, the machine to produce mud which is used to discredit uh, persons and in this case independent media. I have uh, with me today um, Gordana Igric who is uh, the founder and director of the investigative reporting, uh, Balkan investigative reporting network BIRN, uh, which is one of the most prominent and most important investigative journalism organizations in the entire Balkan area. They are celebrating 10 years of existence this year and they have presence in uh, 10 countries. Also with me here is uh, Mikhailo Jovovic, who is editor-in-chief of a Viesti newspaper. Uh, Viesti is um, uh, the most popular, the most read, but also most importantly, it is uh, the most trusted newspaper in Montenegro, uh, which underlines the quality of and the importance of the work they do. Uh, they are known as anti-government newspaper, but it is also important to underline that they are, do not represent any particular political force. Uh, so in this sense, it can uh, be said that they are an independent newspaper. And the, as we will see from um, uh, Mikhailo's presentation, you will see that it's not very easy to survive both physically and financially in a country like uh, Montenegro, regardless of the fact that we are a parliamentary democracy and that we are an official candidate for joining the European uh, Union. Uh, the Balkans, uh, we are covering uh, quite a wide region and the time is short so we cannot enter in detail about every single country. But just to start, to give you the idea about what levels these kind of strategies can reach, I will show you just uh, two samples and they are apparently unrelated headlines. One of them is uh, from Repubblica, Italian newspaper, uh, talking about a young heroine who is uh, leading the Montenegrin spring protests. It, it was published in 2012. The other article is about a woman having sex with a dog. So what do these two articles uh, have in common? They're about the same uh, woman. Uh, this is Vanya Chalovic. She's the leader of one of the most important anti-corruption um, organizations in uh, non-governmental organizations in Montenegro and according to a survey from 2012 uh, she was the second most trusted individual in Montenegro right after the president and more popular than the prime minister of the country. So we don't have time to enter in detail why would they enter in such kind of um, campaign or who came to the idea to do this, I will just give you a hint and tell you that actually Vanya and her organization were the first to use animals as weapons to discredit people and they actually discredit quite a powerful person. This is the former prime minister riding a camel. It, it says greetings from Morocco and it related a local scandal of uh, corruption and of abuse of pu public money. So uh, this is it for, for now, just a quick uh, one extreme example to explain what kind of uh, dirty techniques can be used. Uh, but uh, Gordana here uh, will give us a more serious, a more in-depth um, overview of uh, the situation around this kind of topic in the countries uh, of the Balkans, in the 10 countries in which uh, Birn is operating. Gordana, please. Is that, do I need to switch it on or? Yeah, it's okay. okay. I'm not going to uh, talk in length about this part, but for your sake, uh, just to understand the backdrop of uh, cases that we will talk today, maybe I can put kind of draw for you a little bit of picture about how governments and politicians actually control media and how media internally corrupted very often and actually willingly accept to be uh, uh, abused for the sake of uh, securing um, advertisements. Uh, at, that's the bottom line. So in these nine to ten countries that we work in, basically I can put uh, several points in common. Uh, first of all, all these um, states have overcrowded media market. 
tens and tens of media outlets, radio stations, TV stations, mixed uh, of ownership inherited from the past, from communist times, but also uh, from 90s during the war when different... Um, <laughs> <laughs> during the 90s when the different also donors invested in the so-called independent media. So now we have uh, basically too many um, media, uh, uh, no clear, very often uh, ownership structure, and no economy whatsoever to support it. And that's the crucial thing. I know that the complaint about business model for media is all over the world and nobody can actually sustain serial journalism, but what is happening now in the Balkans is actually much worse than that. We're actually talking about basically no economy, no investments, few, few investors coming in the region and never pulled out of that recession and crisis in 2008. So as such, nobody's bankrupting. That actually tells you a little bit uh, how this all works out, and it works out in the following way. You have a government, and government is, uh, governments are usually the biggest advertisers, I, I suspect also in Montenegro, but all over the countries. So they advertise their different activities, and they advertise there where they feel uh, the media will be uh, cooperative. Then there is some category, I don't know how much you have it uh, in Italy or wherever you come from, this is called public companies. And these public companies are led by uh, basically party political leaders from the party. When some party wins elections, then gets as a present to, be, uh, to lead the company. These companies are also using public money and advertising massively by the order of, of politicians. And finally, you have actually layers of this surviving private companies, and these private companies uh, 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 are very often um, uh, to secure their own different businesses, like you know, permits from the government, like, uh, 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 or they are willingly uh, going not to challenge anyone or not to give marketing money to the media or be associated with the media who could be challenging towards the government. So now you have a scale somewhere, you can still have pluralism, uh, despite very difficult situation in Montenegro, you still have VST. Yeah? In Macedonia, you don't have VST, so everything is controlled by media. In Serbia, since a new government arrived, but also that field was prepared by the previous, we also don't have any media that would challenge and talk about public interest topics. Or uh, they would do it uh, on, the, on the edges, but never really go into serious corruption cases. And then you have Bosnia, poor Bosnia, multi-ethnic country. So because they have ethnic media, they, they will actually all publish everything. So whoever wants to know something can find it. No great uh, standards, but still. But uh, that's the main thing. Actually, there is no money. And uh, that's the space where they, uh, we call it now self, uh, soft censorship. When actually journalists know in advance that they cannot uh, write about something when the editors in advance know that they shouldn't uh, at all challenge anything. So that's kind of already established and uh, this is that new term that is recently established, it's soft censorship. Although in Serbia we have also direct censorship now. So I think that's enough to, to paint quite a murky <laughs> picture of the Balkan media. Okay, yes, uh, now Mikhailo Jovic uh, from VST uh, will illustrate uh, the uh, what is going on in Montenegro and a word to him. So. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, I'll try to be as concise as possible. I prepared some presentations. I don't know if you're going to like it or not. I like it. Uh, the, first of all, a uh, few things about uh, our newspaper. We established in 1997, first privately owned daily in Montenegro. We have transparent ownership owned by the three individuals from Montenegro and two uh, distinguished uh, media companies. Uh, actually, it's one is a media, f media development investment fund from USA and uh, uh, Austrian Styria media company. They own the majority of the shares. Uh, we so far have been financially independent and sustainable, how things will play in the future, we will see. Uh, we are the most trusted newspaper in the country, as uh, uh, all the surveys uh, show. Uh, even the voters of the 
uh, ruling parties, which are our main target, as it should be in the the, uh, the ruling, the, the, the government should be the main target of the newspaper in any democratic country. They trust us the most, which more than, more than half of them. Uh, we are one of the five media which are not controlled by the government, uh, and there is about 100 and something television stations, newspapers, radio stations, and so on. In 2011, we started the uh, web news portal. We are the most successful in Montenegro. Uh, these are the uh, data from Google Analytics, uh, on average 900 users per month, 900,000 users per month, sorry. Uh, and uh, we try to, to, to adapt to the new uh, situation, uh, crisis in the print media, uh, and so on. <clears throat> we still didn't find uh, the magic formula, as no one has, as far as I know. Our, we have a liberal editorial policy, 70 journalists and editors work. Uh, we print 10,000 copies a day. Uh, there is a sister company, but with different ownership, which bears our uh, masthead. Uh, it's TV East, established in 2007. Uh, this is our front page from yesterday. Uh, government owes 70 million euros to, to the companies which uh, it buys uh, uh, drugs from. Uh, uh, also, the normal things, the, you can ski in Montenegro one day and in the same day you can swim at the sea, uh, interview with a, a politician, uh, and so on. Uh, our main focus is uh, these, these issues. We, we cover uh, almost every day uh, with an accent on investigative journalism. Which we, which we are very proud of. Uh, but uh, because we are credible and we are, uh, we are probably the, the, the people who, who uh, make the most damage to the government, which is 25 years in the power uh, so far, uh, we are faced with the with fight. Uh, f they try to destroy us, they try to silence us. Not only us, us, but also uh, every critical voice, which, uh, which, uh, and every person or organization which dares to, to speak, uh, to speak uh, its mind. Uh, it is uh, waged by the parallel system of government, which exists in Montenegro, uh, led by the prime minister, the close political associates of him. Uh, shady business circles, uh, mafia, uh, and they actually rule the country because the institutions are really uh, empty shells which serve only their interest in the majority of uh, time and cases. We are faced with violence, threats and harassment by criminal, political and uh, government uh, propaganda circles. Uh, these are some facts uh, from the international journalism organizations uh, and reports. Uh, reporters Without Borders, we were uh, in that 114th place this year, uh, same as the last year. In 2013, we were 113, 107 in 2012. Uh, around us on the list of the Reporters Without Borders are countries like uh, Qatar, Nigeria, Tajikistan, and in Europe, Macedonia, Russia, and Belarus. Uh, that's uh, to repeat, I want to repeat that Montenegro is a candidate for the European Union and the most, the country which progressed the most in the, in the negotiations. <clears throat> uh, Committee for Protection of Journalism made an analysis headline EU, sh uh, EU should control Montenegro, Wild West for media freedoms. Freedom House says uh, hateful rhetorics by authorities and attacks on journalism diminish media freedoms. Uh, State Department's uh, human rights report last year said representatives of the media, especially journalists from the independent newspaper VST, continue to be targets of threats and physical reprisals. Uh, this is the front page of the report made by the local NGO on the prosecution of attacks on journalists in Montenegro. Uh, you might see here familiar, familiar face. Uh, these are the protests that we held, uh, cases, journalists beaten up uh, and uh, so on. Uh, 
this NGO says that <clears throat> out of the uh, 30 assaults over the past 10 years on Montenegrin media and journalists, 10 happened within the last year and a half before the January 2014, because that was the time when they released the report. Nine out of 10 attacks were, were against uh, journalists and property of uh, our newspaper. Only few attackers were accused, even fewer convicted. None of those who ordered attacks were even investigated, uh, let alone prosecuted. Uh, this is the time where I should show you a little video and tell you what happened. This is not the one. This is the one. Sorry, just... Okay. Uh, I was sitting uh, a meter in, inside this building from the from the from this window. Uh, it was 11:30 in the night. You see the guy come in, putting something there. Uh, we are finishing the newspaper. Our deadline is 12 o'clock. I was putting the final touches on the front page. Uh, I was alone in the office. Uh, in other offices, there were 10 or 15 people uh, doing the same thing. And uh, suddenly, something happened. You will see in a moment that happened. Uh, half a kilo of the military-grade explosives were put uh, on this air condition, which you cannot see now. Uh, windows were broken. Uh, I wasn't hurt. Uh, nobody was hurt in there because uh, the, the sh there were shades on the windows, so they stopped uh, the glass uh, coming in. Uh, let me go back to my presentation. Sorry about this. Yeah. Uh, the bombing happened on December 26. Uh, on two earlier occasions, stones were thrown at VST's premises. I don't, I won't bother you with those uh, videos. In two years, uh, four VST's vehicles were burned. Uh, we have one left. Of course, n none of these uh, early cases were sold sold at all. What happened after the institution, after this uh, bombing, uh, the, the government was under huge pressure from, from the EU, from the US diplomats, from the domestic public opinion. Uh, and weeks after the bombing, two alleged perpetrators have been identified, but they denied an association with this event. Document I have seen from a state institution point to at least one different perpetrators that uh, then the accused. Uh, no progress at all in tracing who is behind, who was behind these attacks, attack, uh, as in many cases before. Prime Minister said publicly that some state structures were involved, also hinting that we organized the bombing ourselves to play, you know, sim to ask for sympathy for the <laughs> Uh, he was never called to testify during investigations, which was the duty of the police and prosecution to, 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 for him to say what does he know about it and they don't. Uh, there are many previous cases which are not solved by the Montenegro police and the judiciary. The editor of the other newspaper, not controlled by the government, is murdered in 2004. Uh, uh, the bodyguard of this uh, writer, Yevren Berkovic, was killed trying to protect him from the beating. Uh, that was not sold. Uh, my managing editor, my managing director was uh, beaten up in 2007. Uh, two people are accused, but uh, they, uh, they're only volunteers who the government found to, to, to volunteer that they did it, but they did not do it. They did not do it. Uh, we have proof of that. Uh, my colleague photojournalist and I were attacked by Podgorica's mayor in 2009 and beaten up. Uh, they took a gun on us and everything else. The mayor was never prosecuted. He is now uh, ambassador in Slovenia. Uh, our sports journalist, Mladen Stojevic, was, uh, had his uh, cheek pierced with a sharp object after he spoke on the B92 insider show on the football mafia, mentioning uh, the, the some dangerous people in Montenegro, including the chief of the mafia in Montenegro, who, who uh, set up the results of the matches and so on. 
Uh, my colleague Tufik Softic was beaten up in 2007 after he wrote about uh, Darko Sharic, the accused uh, narco boss. In uh, He wrote about some of his associates when nobody knew that th this guy existed. Uh, my colleague Oliver Lakic wrote about uh, the uh, factory which produces false cigarettes in the town north of Montenegro, uh, connected with the high uh, security officials. Uh, she was uh, threatened with the rape of her daughter, who was studying here in Italy at the moment, at that moment, and also beaten up in uh, uh, the next year. <coughs> uh, so uh, none of these cases were satisfactorily solved. This is this. Uh, after the bombing and, and after the pressure from the uh, human rights commissioners, from the UN, from the uh, I think Council of Europe, OSC, the government for, formed a commission uh, for monitoring the investigations of attacks on, on journalists. <coughs> uh, the commission includes representatives from the police, prosecution, uh, secret service, journalist associations and independent media. I am the deputy president of the commission. Uh, we entered the commission in order to see what papers they have uh, uh, in uh, uh, and to check if the investigations they did uh, unsuccessfully uh, were, did, were done like that on purpose or, or not, or they don't know how to do their job. As of last week, so it's more than a year later, the commission is still waiting for the files from the police on 12 cases we decided to, to, to examine. Uh, interesting thing, for, for all this, you need to create an environment. Uh, Gordana talked about it. Uh, uh, Nell also talked about it. Uh, basically, uh, the same thing happened uh, in the last uh, four or five years. Uh, the, the people who want to, to silence all the critical voices waged all, all these campaigns. Uh, basically, uh, Prime Minister Milo Djukanovic promotes the idea that it's necessary to protect the state from independent media and journalists, mainly VST, as well as several NGO activists. Uh, these are the names they, uh, he personally called us in public, which uh, some of them uh, are not really <coughs> appropriate, diplomatically said. M that he called us media mafia. Uh, from time to time he accuses we found uh, opposition parties. I think we found uh, five or six opposition parties so far, in, in his opinion. Uh, usual uh, usual word is enemies of the state. Uh, he called us monsters, rats that need dirtization, and so on. Uh, he also publicly called for the rest of the founders and the representatives of the Daily VST and Weekly Monitor. Uh, it's important to stress that we are mainstream newspaper. We are not uh, Charlie Hebdo. We are not uh, under attack from the extremist uh, or fundamentalist religious groups or things like that. We are under attack. Uh, from our own government, uh, and you can imagine what would happen in, in Italy or in any other country if uh, the prime minister or most powerful people attack. Um, if I may just uh, yeah. uh, interrupt for a second, since you took uh, the comparison with others. Uh, before, when Mihailo was talking about the numbers, 900,000 visits a month, uh, Montenegro has a little bit more than 600,000 uh, inhabitants. So it's something like 90 million uh, visitors per month in Italy. It would be, the proportion would be that compared to the, to the population, just to give you a um, uh, parameter to realize that it's not small numbers, it's uh, proportionate to the, sorry. Thank you, Nella, I, <laughs> I didn't want to brag about it. <laughs> uh, so this is, the, this is how it's done. Uh, the prime minister and people around him, uh, those uh, shady businessmen, those mafia people who also own uh, television stations and newspapers, uh, they, did, they do it like this. So they published uh, and republish. Whoever of them published something, all the others publish the same thing, uh, and so it's multiplied, you know, uh, I don't know how many times. Uh, so uh, the main uh, propaganda <coughs> vehicles are Pobjeda, which was uh, state-owned by uh, since uh, uh, ever, but uh, illegally in the last 10 years, because there was a law which forbids government to 
to to own the newspaper, and it was sold to the friend of the prime minister, one of those shady businessmen, uh, and also informal tabloid, which also exists in uh, in Serbia. That's the main uh, club to to beat all those. Uh, uh, stupid people who speak against the government. Also, it's uh, Pink Television and this uh, 777 television owned by the Mafia, who also uh, have a, a state lottery privatized. Uh, in, in I mean, I don't know if it, Italy has a privatized lottery. I'm not sure. I never heard of uh, lottery being privatized <laughs> anywhere. Uh, VST founders are depicted as corrupt tax evaders, organized crime figures, uh, etc. Female journalists are calling, these are the decent uh, words I can put in this uh, presentation, prostitutes, prostitutes and so on. Uh, PM, uh, Prime Minister coordinates this aggressive campaign through the spin doctor imported from Serbia, uh, who is also advising uh, Serbian Prime Minister, so I heard. Uh, one of my colleagues once said, uh, we write about the government, shady business and the mafia, all these media write about us. So that's how it is. Uh, TV Pink has a, has a news program uh, which lasts a minute or two, and that's the name of the program, minute or two. And uh, the other colleague of mine said, uh, if it's not for VST or these other critical voices, this program a minute or two would last a second or two. Uh, this is how the how we are depicted uh, in the, in this media uh, every day, almost every day. Uh, we are the media trash, uh, together with the political trash. Uh, I don't know other things, medical. Uh, these are this is the lady from the from the Nellas presentation. Uh, we are somehow together in this. I wonder why. Uh, s this is the uh, connection with the, with the Serbia, false connection, connection, of course. They say that former pr president of, the, of Serbia uh, gave us a million euros in uh, 2011 and 12 to this TV VST. And that's only the, the example of... Uh, go on. If I may just uh, give another comparison, the... Uh, case with the newspaper Pobida, which is government owned, it's quite similar to the one between Rete Quattro and La Sette because there was a law forbidding it from existing, but it existed for years and years. And all the public money went into it, although nobody read that newspaper. Not even pro-government voters read it, but all the money went to it. And some of the sabotaging campaigns, they're also similar to the case of, of the judge who condemned the um, uh, media set to paying a price, and there was this case about the blue socks, and th that is the level, but also they, they can permit themselves to be uh, more aggressive in, in that sense. And just to connect these two, two stories, this is the connection uh, on, the, on, the, on your uh, right, is it? On your left is the pra Serbian Prime Minister Vucic, uh, on the right is the uh, Montenegrin Prime Minister Milo Đukanović, in the middle is the guy called Mohamed Dahlan, who is the, uh, wanted, from the fr wanted by the Palestinian Authority for corruption. Uh, whatever it is, uh, the, the uh, Arab investors are flooding, the, or at least saying that they're going to flood those two countries which uh, didn't happen yet, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but they look, they don't look to me here like uh, two prime ministers and a businessman, but they look like something else. Uh, this is another example that we want to sell uh, VST to the former CIA leader, whoever it is. We didn't. Uh, the other part of this is uh, financial uh, financial pressure and distort, distorted market, media market. Uh, research by the Center for Civic Education uh, showed that more than 90% of advertising by the state uh, uh, agencies and public enterprises, the state companies, state-owned companies, goes to pro-government media without any established criteria. How do they do? How they do it? You know. So you have uh, port of port of. We have only one port in Montenegro which is a, a cargo port, and they advertise in, in all these newspapers. I don't know why should 
support, uh, advertise something, you know, they have no competition. And it's not for the general public. <clears throat> they also pressure the public and private companies not to advertise in VST and other independent media or pressure them to drastically reduce their advertising budget in order to finance, financially ad undermine our operation. Uh, government has injected millions in media under its control. Uh, TV market is distorted by unfair competition from Belgrade's TV outlets Pink and Prva under complete control by the Prime Minister uh, here so in Montenegro. Right. Yeah, <laughs> ours here, yours there. Uh, basically, uh, when uh, b big companies sell advertising, uh, they pay uh, for the Serbia and uh, all these t TV stations gave, gave them uh, uh, advertising in Montenegro gratis for, you know, to get a better deal. Uh, so my, my uh, conclusion is that no free, mar free media market in Montenegro. Uh, to this uh, state, uh, until recently, state-owned newspaper, uh, Nella mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, unlawful state aid of 26 million euros in the last 10 years. Also, non-transparent aid goes to other media under the government and mafia control. Uh, they dump prices of print copies and advertising, uh, and the TVVST lost more than 3 million euros waiting for uh, more than two years for national broadcast broadcasting license, uh, all the usual tricks. Uh, so, uh, also uh, court cases, uh, public officials sue us a lot, uh, and because of those uh, institutions which are not independent and uh, serve the interests of the of the this parallel system which rules Montenegro, uh, those uh, suits uh, against monitor monitor is weekly. VST and this other newspaper done uh, amounted to 11 million euros. More than 300,000 we paid, three of our media. I was prosecuted for this case uh, when I, I was attacked by the Podgorica mayor for three years, uh, threatened with a with jail sentence of one to eight years, although I didn't do nothing. I, I wish now I, 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 I did. Uh, also, uh, case of... Uh, Prime Minister's sister, who is the most prominent lawyer, most prominent lawyer in Montenegro. She handles all the privatizations uh, as a lawyer. Uh, American Security and Exchange Commission accused her of uh, taking bribes during the privatization of telecom. I'm finishing. Uh, all three of these media wrote stories about that, uh, very professional stories, but uh, we were fined with 5,000, some are acquitted, but then the, the, which uh, the lower court misses, the, the higher court don't miss. Uh, also, the public radio and television, they have 12,000, 12 million euros of the state subsidy. They have advertising, they have big EU grants for modernization, but the, it's not a public service, it's a government mouthpiece. Uh, results of all this, uh, TV East has serious financial problems and is fight, it's, it's fighting for its survival. Newspaper VST had to cut staff and salaries a few times. Uh, we had to form a non-profit center for investigative journalism to, to, uh, in order to be able to have uh, funds for that because we cannot finance it anymore as we, as we did for all these years. Uh, several very good journalists left VST to other occupations, uh, not to other media because they do, real proper journalists cannot work in many other media in Montenegro. And my conclusion of all this is our future is uncertain. What is going to happen? I'll let you know. Thank you. Uh, just before we go to uh, the case of uh, Bir Serbia, there was um, uh, the case of um, financial pressure is, 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 is uh, quite interesting uh, and it's, it's a little bit different situation than it is in Montenegro because most power is in public advert uh, advertisement. But what is interesting and Mihailo was telling before the panel uh, was that also some private uh, companies have to uh, take out uh, the, their advertisements from VST. So they cannot use the market logic and say, okay, my money is, will be most worth in the most popular 
uh, newspaper of the country because what happens? They put the money uh, in the ads they, they in. Put the adver they, they, they put the advertising, and uh, in the next two days, two days they have five or six inspections coming from the state. You know, the financial, the, the others, sanitary, and others. And the guy just said, "Oh, sorry, I cannot do this anymore." So that's one of the ways they they, they do it. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit different case in Serbia with uh, Birn, uh, who is, um, as Gordon I will explain it, they are, uh, don't depend on the country or on the local advertisements on, uh, for their financing. They work through grants, uh, but uh, there are other ways in which uh, media in Serbia and the, and the government try to uh, discredit them. And we will see now about the case uh, Birn under attack. Under fire. Under fire. <laughs> okay. That's how we call that our case. Um, BN in general actually does as a core um, activity investigative reporting and mostly into corruption. We also have summer school for investigative reporting. We have competitions. So dealing in the, in the region for media development. In Serbia, uh, for years, so I'm not talking just about this government, but previous one that invented the style of blackmailing media and mainstream media. We would publish, look into tenders, how there were uh, procurements, uh, and we would publish articles on our website, which is not mainstream website. Uh, no, no media would dare to touch it because that was kind of quietly agreed you know, that whoever uh, takes it would be then punished by. Uh, as uh, he explained, the withdrawal of advertisement. That meant basically going for social media, people would print articles from our website when they were protesting, but that would never reach huge uh, audience. Um, and then what happened is uh, that previous government was more skilled in the sense was subduing and actually not letting us exist in the media world. So now a new government, uh, what happened with them? They are less tolerant for the critics, they are very sensitive and don't um, accept any challenge. So we published the article, um, actually several articles, and each time when we published the article we had uh, this informer, TV Pink and other media that he's mentioning, but it's actually coming from Serbia, these media outlets, mouthpiece of the government, we would have something very kind of old fashioned, we remember that from 90s during the war, uh, mention, uh, saying that we are spies, we are paid by the foreigners, foreign mercenaries, actually the same story like Russia has now attitude toward the NGOs. And we are NGO that we fundraise for different kind of uh, EU tenders, uh, different uh, development agency foundations as all other countries. This is weird, these accusations being spied, because this government is actually saying that it wants to go to EU. So it, it's completely confusion why you would be spy and traitor, while at the same time your own state actually gets so much money from EU as assistance and wants to join EU. So each uh, article, a little bit uh, getting worse and worse. One last summer, we suddenly saw in a newspaper like big title, uh, um, Prime Minister had to cancel his vacation because Bjorn Spies booked uh, the room in, in his hotel and he couldn't have a dessert rest. And things were completely crazy, we never been there. Some kind of lake bore. But that was preparation and I sensed that all, all last summer. And then finally in January, uh, and that was the trigger, we published uh, quite important for the Serbia investigation into one tender, which was, I will not uh, bother you with details because you probably are not from the country, or if you are interested, you can ask later. It's about, more about dewatering big mine, and losing, uh, Serbia is losing million euros daily because it has to actually um, import electricity because of the uh, of that flooded mine. So they opened the tender, they waited four months for the tender, and then finally gave the tender uh, to a consortium of one Serbian and one Romanian company that never had in their experience uh, dewatering the big, pumping out the big water. So that was the trigger. First thing tomorrow, I look to the and I see Prime Minister giving the press conference saying that Bian lies, and it is all not about what. So next following three months, no media except seven. Uh, margin, marginal small media outlets never mentioned what we published. 
but was published the following, uh, that EU officials are paying beer to undermine Serbian reforms, press conference. And then, um, then accusations and accusations that lasted almost like we had even live blog in our website, if you can show, daily we could not catch up with all these accusations. Media mafia, I am pole dancer for the European commissioner, uh, I am Madame Claude who runs prostitution, journalistic prostitution ring, uh, ring in Europe. I sort out my grants for the beer in, uh, in restaurants, um, drinking wine with some EU officials and things like that. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, <clears throat> but the interesting thing here is nothing it happening. Was beer. What? It was beer. A beer. No wine, <laughs> beer, champagne, whatever. I mean, I can't remember anymore because sometimes. Uh, but what is interesting is that we did uh, commission external mo media monitoring uh, just to show us how actually deep control, uh, crowd control of the media is. I know we personal these editors in chief. They were all my journalists when I was younger or they were my friends and colleagues from 90s. Uh, in three weeks, there were 400 news items devoted to beer. Four times somebody called to ask our reaction four times. Uh, that means no mention, seven altogether mentioned what was the topic that we published. And after uh, seven days of 24-hour uh, uh, turnaround of the news of different poli party political uh, allies uh, giving the speeches, talking about us as spies, uh, uh, media mafia, uh, trying to steal 23 million euros from the energy sector from Serbia. Uh, I wrote a letter to editors-in-chief in Serbia, each one of them, 67 letters I wrote and said, colleagues, please, I want to draw attention to the public interest in this country, and it is not about uh, spying of anything else. It is about actually public interest. Who got millions of euros for to pump out the water from the huge mine, and Serbia is losing money? I got two answers uh, email, on email, like tell us how to help you, and both very small NGO um, run, um, not very visited websites. So that's such a scale. And uh, also interesting to me, knowing all these personalities for decades in, in the media world was very interesting. You could see that there was a, like mainstream media, many of them who, whose heart was not in that story. So they, they were not enjoying, they were not running after us or making witch hunt. But what they would do, what now we call in Serbian neutral reporting, meaning carrying out accusations carrying out accusations all the time of different officials, which reached on the end that we even threatened the life of prime minister. I mean, to that point, they were going. So they would just, you would look TV uh, screen and you would see Birn lies, prime minister said, Birn lies, I don't know, minister of energy said, and so on. But they, they would not comment on that. They would just neutrally carrying uh, the statements of different officials. And then you would have this informer and this group of, uh, um, really mouth be so that they would invent stories like um, stealing that. Uh, that was actually quite a sad uh, feeling, but uh, being war reporter from 90s and experiencing many things in the past, I, I think I, I was the least upset uh, uh, comparing with my staff that was very disturbed. And then one day, because I called several editors and asked, can you interview me or can you interview anyone? And you ask, give us a side the story, nobody dared. So I um, start, decided to get a, a taxi in the morning and four or five taxi rides across the town and ask what do they think about beer taxi, because they are always the best in Belgrade. They always know you, uh, you can uh, have this pool. And uh, out of five, four said, uh, Oh, we know this uh, this spy organization that actually spied, <laughs> spied, uh, and we know that they are all roaming around and want to uh, abuse Serbia and so on, which reminiscence on the, that past where NATO bombardment, wars, and everything where whatever was coming from outside was like xenophobia. So my son was joking, uh, that's a great uh, media strategy, door to door. Knock, knock, I'm not a spy. What do you think about me? I'm not a spy, and so on. So I was joking a little bit. Now calm down, 
uh, calm down, but I think that to the next investigation, because I don't think that we can actually give up. I think that we are probably the only organization now that is not financially dependent on the government. Nothing stops us publishing, just uh, uh, important thing for the journalists to know, nobody dares to give us interviews anymore. People like, if they give us statements, they are off the record, they don't want to be quoted. Uh, it's actually a struggle to, to put article institutions that are obliged, public institutions that are obliged to give you by that Freedom of Information Act uh, docu documents, they just don't send you documents. Um, for months we are waiting for that energy public company and, and the World Bank that was actually involved in this corruption case. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. that gives you the picture how this looks like. And by the way, we have three journalists in a <laughs> Uh, and one article was that we are preparing uh, overthrowing the government in spring. Did you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we are already in April and I'm wasting my time here. I Gordana, how many journalists are now in the network? In the network about, uh, uh, we have broader network about 500 uh, in the Balkans. Uh, we have about 30 employees in Serbia, out of that maybe 15, because these are different projects, so they are not all journalistic projects. Mm -hmm. 17 Kosovo. And to say that we actually had problems everywhere uh, in different countries in different time. Our uh, director in Kosovo was threatened by prime minister and the media there like uh, because of uh, yet again corruption and our Albanian editor was beaten by one MP in the parliament in the middle of the town in the center. But uh, this, this um, case which didn't end with any violence actually had shown the depth of uh, no capacities for the public to hear a single fact that that, that is uh, challenging anything what is official yes. line. This is scary. We have to hurry up yep. uh, so that we leave some time for the for the questions. Uh, just to say that uh, beer and journalists are all the time uh, they get the f they work for other media as well. And Birn uh, finances through their grants their stories. They can do cross-border reporting. They can they get the funding that they will never get from their new newspapers. And then uh, Birn gives them for free, any media, any newspaper can reprint the article for free. So it really raises the bar of the, of the journalism in all take 10 countries because they can get the funding that they no would normally have. And they are winning numerous prizes all over the, 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 the region for their stories. So. And, uh, and so we yes, can yesterday had on the front page of a republished of investigation, yeah. Um, okay, th so that's, that's all. That's thank all you. Done. And uh, if you have some questions, we will, I think we can use some, uh, we can have 10 minutes for questions because we started a bit later. So maybe it's a bit naive, but do you have any expectation from the EU? Uh, Mon Montenegro is candidate now to join the EU. Do you have any expectation that the situation will get better? Uh, related to Serbia, we have actually even more difficult situation related to diplomats in the EU and all diplomats from other countries. Because as you know, Serbia was in a conflict with Kosovo. Kosovo uh, pronounced independence and EU supports basically that independence majority. So first time they got the leader, prime, my prime minister, who wants to actually be cooperative. And uh, I think that all Western countries and EU are deadly scared of refugees and new craziness coming from Serbia, uh, remembering 90s. So he's very kind of cooperative, sending uh, officially messages that uh, brotherhood and unity and the cooperative with Kosovo, and Kosovo is the major diplomatic pressure on Serbia to be recognized. In that's, for that sake, and that, that's not just my opinion, that's kind of I was told by EU officials, for that sake they, uh, they will sacrifice, I think, uh, human rights and media freedom issues as long as they don't have a problems with him and people feels the issues with, uh, with being tolerant with Kosovo and maybe even at certain point in future recognizing okay. Kosovo. We, and we the weirdest thing is that this is the man who actually was the radical nationalist 
who was like a, um, in paramilitaries who was actually very prominent during the 90s. Under we Milosevic. have to cut because they told me that yeah. we have five minutes in total. Okay. I will respond shortly in a tweet that in all more or less non-EU Balkan countries and candidates, EU is seen as like this safe, this solution to everything. But also the problem is that uh, EU uh, motivates change on paper, but they also shut one eye and pretend sometimes that everything is okay. Can just I, so can I just add one sentence? Yeah. So, sorry. Uh, situation in Montenegro is, di is different now because they, uh, they have Serbia now, which, which they can make a success story uh, regarding the, <laughs> this is a joke, but mm -hmm. uh, regarding the negotiations towards the EU. Uh, and especially because the EU officials uh, in the last year put uh, uh, much more pressure for the for the improvement of the freedom of the media. Uh, my hope is if they stick to what they say, that uh, that uh, it would be better. Uh, but it can never be better with this government because they all play, they all always play the games, pretend they do something and then uh, for various political reasons from the EU and from the Montenegrin government, things are uh, advancing very, very slowly. So that's, that's the I point. think we can take one more question, if there is anyone. Yes. Uh, does anyone want to ask a question? No, okay. okay. So thank you very much.